This episode is sponsored by Teletone Audio, which is a plugging company that makes a ton of virtual instruments for music makers. Right now at TeletoneAudio.com, you can use the code HMD20 and get 20% off their single plugins in their store. I'll leave a link in the description below. Hurry before the code is done. Now, on to your episode. You heard what's poppin'? It's yo, the yo. FL Studio Podcast. Hey, cut it out. See, you see, that, that's <laughs> what you do. Studio yo, yo, what's podcast. going on? Yo, it's your boy Devon Terrell. Welcome to the Audio Nerds Podcast. Podcast for Audio Nerds like yourself. Please make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. Also, remember that one lucky person in the comments that leaves a fire comment, which I know you're going to leave, is going to get that free version of the VIP Gold Edition Rosetta Compressor. My yeah. name is Devon Terrell. I'm a Pro Tools user. Also, please become a paid member of our service, too, as far as this channel, so that you can get exclusive episodes. If you're watching this right now, chances are the members have been seeing this, and that that is, I am a Pro Tools user. I have something very special, but we're going to get this out the way. To the right of me. It's the Fly FL gang. You know, all December we putting it on. Okay. Why? Because it's getting cold in the streets, man. Okay. So we said that. That there. was good. You, I, I'm really getting mad that y'all are writing y'all like, <laughs> intros before y'all come It can't here. be off the top? No, that's not. No, no, no. no. no, no. There's no top. way. That was too smooth. No way. Let's street. see. Oh, what you what you got over there? Me? Yeah, what I'm you the, got? You know, you already know. It's your boy, the amazing the amazing Ableton artist, you know? Nah. I'm just chilling. That's what you did? That alliteration. Ableton artist? You see that? Alliteration? Triple A. Okay, got you. Triple A. Is that one of your tiers? Why you triple A? Because triple A batteries are small. Y'all really like... Wow, that was good. You didn't write... That was good. Now I'll give you that. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. That's high. Okay. Enough of the theatrics. Um, so obviously when you see us in this room, chances are we have a special guest. And um, it was really hard not to talk to this person uh, beforehand when he arrived because we were both like kind of just nerding out about so much stuff. So I'm glad we finally got the cameras on. Shout out to Camden that's recording this. Right now we have a very special guest, uh, Grammy nominated, Grammy winning. There's so many things. This person is so multi-layered. Very, very smart dude when it comes to this as far as the recording, mixing side, a jack of all trades, studio owner. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Ben Thomas. Give it up, Ben Thomas. Thank you, guys. That was beautiful. What's up, man? What's up, man? Feeling great. Feeling great. Blessed to be here. Thank you for the beautiful intro. Just blessed to talk and, you know convert some people from using fl you there know? we Crazy. go <laughs> see we Crazy. like when people come and they know the like our oh, culture yeah. like they, they just know already oh, yeah. and stuff like that but they that's you know it, it's really dope to have you here and i know that you're back and forth from philly and stuff like that but you are a new yorker yep. right like you're a new yorker mm-hmm. which i didn't know i didn't know you was from new york yeah like, yeah no i was um i was born and raised in harlem and i lived oh, here oh. until 2008 2009 and then mm-hmm. i moved to virginia briefly and right. i moved to philly so i always describe it as like i'm from new york but i was like raised in philly like right. I went to high school there i went to college there like that's yeah. where i became the person that i am right right that's and where i made that. my first music connections as well so. got you got you and you know obviously you know you're so known for obviously the ozzy vert for the jasmine sullivan stuff um you even have stuff in, in country as far as being nominated uh for grammys and stuff like that the first question that we always like to ask everyone is your daw journey yeah so i want to know where you started like daw wise and obviously where you've landed today so like what was the first <laughs> daw or just recording yeah like, thing that you used so the first recording experience um was in ninth grade so this is 2010 and it was in garage man okay. garage man i had a friend named kenny he wanted to make a mixtape and um we took the microphone from rock band like the usb mm-hmm. microphone from rocky yeah. um and we used garage band on like my old like the old white macbook but mm-hmm. not like the rounded edge I one like the box the box one. Oh, yeah. White yeah. One. the box yeah. white one yeah 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 yep. yeah and we begged our math teacher to let us use his classroom during lunch for like a wow. week wow and we like recorded a mixtape and right. it was so incredibly bad oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> and i'm i'm thankful that i'm just old enough that it didn't make it on soundcloud right so. and i stayed up all night and i burn cds one by one uh-huh and i went to staples you know you go to staples and you get like the little cases yeah and yeah. then like the little printout so to put the sticker on oh, the yes. cd yeah and I, like four on the page oh, yes. my right. goodness. i stayed up all night i made like 50 copies of them nice oh my god and um i we were using like Nicki minaj beats or whatever beats were popular in like 2000 right. right right and I was like, yo, we can't sell them because we're using these other beats. Right. I didn't know he also stayed up and burnt his own copies. <laughs> so he gets to school. He's selling them for $5. <laughs> I'm giving them away. Oh. Um, my school was on two sides of a street. Yeah. And so we got into it in the middle of the street. And I, I was kind of a hothead little kid back then. <laughs> and I was like, you know what? Forget. I start throwing CDs out of the street. <laughs> Uh, that was expensive to throw them yo, CDs is weapons bro yo yeah. I started, I started, but they were in the cases I started throwing throw CDs out of that <laughs> random joint <laughs> street um, so it was that there was another kid I went to school with he mm-hmm. he was like you know how there's always that one kid in school that's like doing music yes. okay. and so yeah. again aging myself he, he one day he was like yo 
check this out. He gave me a CD with Reason Four. Oh, wow. Um, okay. I think they're, what are they up to, like 12 or 13 at this I, point? I don't even I know. So. Like, so there's a yeah, it's probably Yeah, this yeah, was Reason yeah. 4. This is pre, back then, you couldn't use any outside plugins or outside audio in Reason. In Reason. It was like its own ecosystem. Right, right. right. So, he, so we went from GarageBand to Reason, then to Logic. Um, and then sometime towards the end of high school, maybe uh, early college, um, there's this woman in Philly. Um, her name is Typewriter. Um, first name's Crystal. She's an amazing songwriter. She also does some really amazing work with kids. She actually just um, she started a music program at a school in Philly, and they just did an HBO documentary about it and stuff. It's really oh, wow. really okay. beautiful. Well, you know the name of the documentary? Right I can't here? remember the name. Of the okay, documentary we'll find top, it. We'll but find yes, it. it's really dope. And she's also written songs for. She worked with Diddy for a while. She's written with Kanye. She's amazing. Wow. But um. She lived down the street from me. I had mm. turned my mom's basement into a studio. Right. Um, like, we built a vocal booth and everything. Like, shout right. out my mom. She's amazing. Mm -hmm. But um, I let her use the space for this group that she was developing. Uh -huh. And I never charged them. And I just would sit next to her and just watch. And this is why I learned, like, vocal production and, like, right. the importance of speed and Pro Tools and stuff. But right. she was like, if you want to keep working with us, you have to get Pro Tools. Right. And so this is probably 2000, I want to say... 14 ish okay and so then right. i got it i got a little mbox oh, nice. like the black one the mbox yeah. three okay good. i bought it on ebay so i got the big one yeah yeah gotcha. um, okay and Jeez, i would I sit in my that. mom's basement and i would just cry trying to figure out how to use pro tools right. i could not figure it out right and i think it's so it's such a blessing to have this conversation here because what i think a lot of younger engineers producers don't understand is back then i mean it's not that long it was about 10 years ago there wasn't any of this mm -hmm. there was what four or five youtube videos so like you were struggling figuring out because there was <laughs> mm -hmm. no true content i mean this is probably pre-mixed with the masters even yeah mm -hmm. like, yeah it was very bare it was nothing I, you know and we have this conversation a lot too so yeah. i'm glad you brought that up like where we talk about kind of the people that the first videos that i remember remember seeing was like it was this guy uh david grant what we from yes, recording uh, revolution uh, yeah recording revolution yeah. You remember? Yep. okay yep. so you we around the same age so recording revolution and that was big because mm -hmm. he was like doing exactly what we're doing now no. like back then yep. mm -hmm. and he was giving me there all was, that information uh, matthew weiss i remember yeah. that i remember mm -hmm. that too he's, he's he's the homie now yeah. um that's what's up there was because he was with the pro audio files and their their pro website audio mm -hmm. files. Yep. and then that. there was um ken lewis oh okay. had a couple long form videos where he was mixing this 50 cent song i remember that <laughs> you, and you never forgot that I never forget that, that. that reminds me of when uh dave pensado mm -hmm. came uh, on the scene yep. doing content and I remember like looking at my phone and he was like, I'm going to show you how I did this Snoop Dogg vocal. And I remember running home. I yeah. was like, fam, I'm going to learn. How, like, I'm going to see this like physically. Yeah. So yeah, I come from that time too. Yeah. So I was just crying in the basement and then I just, it's one of those things where like it's slow, 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 and then shoots up and then mm -hmm. you really start to learn. And right. And kind of plateau. And it's yeah. like, as you get better, it's harder to keep learning things, but right. you still learn stuff. Yeah, So absolutely. that's my DAW journey. And now, um... All the recording and mixing is in Pro Tools and productions in Ableton. And then gotcha. I have Logic and FL. I, I know them a little bit, but right. it's mostly uh -huh. to open other people's stuff. And yeah. But I will say this. For versatility, um, one of the songs on Friday's album, because uh -huh. Friday records himself in Logic. Right. And I'm like, just send me the file and I will take care of all the edits and everything. Like, right. don't bounce anything. Just send it to me exactly how it is. Right. One of the songs, the song Stand By Me, mm -hmm. there was, I want to say... 70 tracks of vocals in there because every ad lib is on a different line and he's very mm. particular like it has to be exactly where it's at right. and so i just mixed it in logic and it was a really interesting thing because uh -huh. none of my infrastructure that i've built down pro tools was there right. no like no mix bus no, no auxes, like it's like right auxes but right. not even even like the plugin presets right the mm. default none of that true so right did it all it was like going from scratch almost and it was right. like it was an interesting experience you know mm, but tough. it was you know, it, the job needed to get done and right. the sound that he had crafted needed to be preserved and it right. just wasn't going to sound the same if I bounced right. it. Right, absolutely. Let me ask you this about Friday. So obviously you're privy to those sessions and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. What is Friday capturing his vocal with? What is he recording with? Do you know? I don't know what it, mic he has uh -huh. um, because I'm not, he records himself so I'm not right. involved in the recording in any mm -hmm. way. Right. Um, so it varies between what mic he has. I mean, he might have a 103 at this point, but uh -huh. he's also going to other studios and whatnot. And just recording right. and stuff um, like he's that. recording himself directly in Logic. Right. Very, very simple chain. Uh -huh. um, waves tune, never auto tune, always waves tune real time. It has to be waves tune real time. Interesting. Even we just did a Vivo performance and I had them send me his live vocal dry to then run it through waves tune. Wow. Because wow. they ran it through auto tune and he didn't like the way it sounded. It right. has to be waves tune. Interesting. And then it's Oof. just like a very basic eq that's essentially everything rolled off and like a shelf 
Wow, and, and that's something. everything rolled up from the bottom, mm-hmm. and then just and a, a boost and a shuffle. And that's yep. literally it. Yeah, so then I bring it into Pro Tools and I, you know, do what I need to do. But that's right. what he, yeah. And Goes then uh, H Verb with like a five second, um, with like five second on it for the H Verb for the H Verb, mm-hmm. and that's it. Mm-hmm. So let me, so let me ask you this because you know, fr- I'm gonna be honest with you. I'm glad you landed on Friday because yeah. Friday has such a unique sound yeah. that we talk about all the time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when it comes to you know, from the mixing side of things, how are you able to get his vocal? so present but so i guess you could say wet as far as that reverb like it really always feels really big and present even yeah. from his little subtleties to he's very dynamic right incredibly so like the vibrato like he's a very technical kind of vocal how are you getting it so upfront, um bright and just also reverb but it doesn't sound like it's like re- like destroying the mix as far as the fidelity and stuff like that um i think so the first thing is in those moments, it's it's very difficult for us to like turn off our traditional engineer brain. Like this is what you're supposed to do, right. mm-hmm. and just go along with what you're given. So normally, I would want to turn that boost off, right. right? Right. But when I did, it just had this darkness, and it didn't have the same brightness. Right. Um, mm-hmm. I think one of the things, and I can't even take credit for this. It's it's you know it's our great producers mm-hmm. like leaving space for that vocal they know where he sits right and so just kind of leaving space there and then i kind of take this approach with everything it's just a lot of reduction yeah right we're, reduce- gotcha. we're reducing the frequencies out of the music as much as possible right and then boosting when we need to right so even you know if they can see the screen like you know it's the chain is incredibly simple showing the screen perfect yep. chain's incredibly simple right DSing, <laughs> little reducing on the pro q right right um specter love specter nice yeah so we're Dope. using specter um okay. to boost the top i'm looking at so I'm, I'm looking at one of the songs right now it's about almost a 2 D db boost on the top shelf okay but i always do that on the warm setting i was about to ask you if you on solid warm, i was like warm. which one warm, warm on the top boost, okay right so i feel like i'm getting that brightness without the harshness when i do that gotcha um and then a little bit of control with uh, our compressor. And then I think on this one, I had to pull out the Weiss DSer as well for a little spot DSer. You like the Weiss? Are you going, uh, what do you, what do you, where is your, uh, your boundaries on the Weiss DSer? Are you going to more like the 6K? Like where are you Weiss DSer wise? Um, on Weiss DSer, I, for this one, this one was a, between 7 and 11. 7 and 11. Gotcha. Yeah, between so 7 and 11, just subtle, gotcha. just to, right. because I did that big boost with the Spectre, I right. had to DS it like, before and after. So right. we did the DSing before was almost to control for the fact that in Logic, he did that shelf. Right. And now I'm doing like a saturation shelf to get it to cut to the top. Right. And that's really it. Um, wow. Keeping it super simple. Right. I'm a reducer, right? It's it's a lot of reduction. Right. And then the additions that I do uh-huh. are going to be with saturation. Gotcha. Makes, As uh, opposed to just like straight EQ, like just kind of like with that. Boosting, and I like yeah. that a lot because it instead you're basically bringing in new harmonics. Exactly. Right? As opposed to like, okay, well, Obviously, a lot of times when we boost, we'll get like certain things that we don't want out of it because we're boosting so much. But mm-hmm. I like that. I'm a big fan of Spectre mm-hmm. um, for that very reason. Like I like yeah. to like do things with saturation. So mm-hmm. with his vocal, basically to get more of that cut, that sensation that we're all feeling from it, you're using Spectre to kind of like just add that saturation yep. at the top and stuff. And leaving those uh-huh. low mids that we normally would take out because right. that's that's the essence of his vocal is that body. Low mid, right. that body. We can't right. take that out. Right. And then... Um, I, in my template, I have the lead vocal triggering track spacer on the aux with the music. Nice. Yeah. Can I say something? Yes. You just made us feel not so bad. <laughs> yeah. Because you. Yeah, me. Because I'll be like, I'll be like, man, I feel bad, right? But no. it, but it works, dude. It like, works. Yeah. And then what, what I do as well, because it's just triggering it on the music aux, right? Right. right. And then um, what I do, and you can see it on the screen, is we, I put the low cut to uh-huh. about one fifty eight, nice. and the high okay. cut to about 6K. So we're only uh, triggering it in the mid-range. So we're leaving the low end of the music, right. we're leaving the high, high end, end, and right. we're just dipping the mid-range where right. we need it, right? Um, that, and then it's really just a, it's really just a balancing thing with right. the music, getting it to sit nicely, mm. and then just accepting it for what it is, right? right. There's going to be a lot of reverb. It's not me- preferably my style, but right. that's what he wants, and that's right. critical to his sound. And then, mm-hmm. you know, from there... You just go, and We're that's going it. back and forth. I mean, a couple of them songs, I'm the one I'm looking at right now is Update 27. 
So wow, like, oh, wow, it's one of those. Like, it's so one of those. He's very particular yeah. about his stuff. He's incredibly stuff like particular, but effective at communicating what he's looking for. Nice, which, I can which is a, a thank you for saying it because that's a big deal. When someone's just like, I don't know, it just doesn't sound right. It's like, hey, oh, no, no, what do you mean by that? The complete opposite. If you saw me in his text thread, especially for the album, mm -hmm. this is like, yo, turn this up 0.4 dB. Oh, wow. Like, it's, it's that wow. type of so like, that yeah. type. precision. See, and I yeah. think that's the beauty, a beautiful thing about an artist that records themselves because they know how to communicate effectively yes. because they know how they can take notes and how to give notes. I tell every artist that even if you have somebody, you should learn to record yourself yeah simply because the way i equate it i use a lot of analogies i equate it like this imagine if i was like yo we're going to spain and you know no spanish yeah none true how are you going to get it like but even if you know just a little bit of spanish right you'll have a much better experience so i'm like mm -hmm. if you record yourself then you'll at least be able to speak the language of the studio right yes. and right. you'll get better results you don't have to record yourself but at least you know what is going on right you know at, that, at the end of the day and stuff like that you that's know, really cool. that's crazy mm-hmm we need a soundboard on this pod. Because this is the moment where I hit the gunshots like, oh, he's <laughs> Hitting gunshots what? is tear, it's tears on our audience. Oh, that is oh, yeah. tears. That, that, you have to understand it's the same thing uh -huh. with Pro Tools, right? Right. What you guys understand, but a lot of people don't understand this, right? They're like, well, why don't studio switch? Because the infrastructure of that studio is built on Pro Tools. They invested mm -hmm. tens of thousands of dollars in that Avid system, right? right. right? You need to understand how it works so that you can speak the language of the studio. It doesn't need to be your main dog. Mm -hmm. I get it, right? But you need to understand what's going on mm -hmm. for artists, songwriters, yes. producers, everybody. So when you're looking at the screen, you understand what's what's going on. You right. know, and mm -hmm. you can you can communicate what you want. Right. That's all we're trying yeah. to do here. And um, it's it's pretty fun to come in and just obviously I'm a Pro Tools user, so I just get right in and I, I'm acclimated. All I need to know is like, hey, how's your stuff routed? Like, cool, exactly. and I'm up and running. What you gonna say? And with that being said, y'all, the first FL centric studio in New York City. <laughs> Is on the way. Trust hey, me. <laughs> good. We're gonna good, build a huge studio based on FL. Luck. Just all it. FL engineers. Because let me tell you what's gonna happen. Let me tell you what's gonna happen. They're gonna be like, bad. Oh my god, that FL uh, session was so great. Then I'm like, all right, time for mixing. And it's like, <laughs> what do we do now? It's we'll like, pro we provide mixing services. We provide mixing. We love you know that. what? I love it. I love <laughs> I'm about that. Say, you. He might. He might bring them Bryce and Teller. You know. Ooh. Y'all really let me you tell you might. something. Y'all need this. That's all y'all got as far as it's like oh, what, what if he announces it? In what, FL what if he announces it? Where was it mixed? What if, he, <laughs> did he mix it in FL Studio? I'm, I don't know who mixed it, so I can't. Well, at least we know that he did lie. his chain because he recorded himself. Okay, well, he recorded it. So like, there's still just a mix Friday to it. Logic. You said yeah. you recorded Logic, yeah. right? Logic, yeah. Yep. A so lot of artists recorded it. So there's still Honestly, a mix to it. When a lot, when an artist is approaching me, you mm -hmm. know, especially if it's a mixing client of mine um, and they want to start recording themselves, uh -huh. I tend to push them towards Logic to start. Interesting. Mm. Yeah. What is your reasoning for pushing um, them towards the Logic? End, well, it's... Now it's a little bit different, but for a while, the cost of entry was lower. That's very you true. Know, the cost of entry was lower. Very um, true. And it just felt a little bit more comfortable yes. for uh -huh. them. Um they could it's also it's a little bit easier for them to enter into the production as well in yeah. logic you know what i mean yeah and just it felt and the ones they had you know messed around with garage band before and i'm like okay this is going to look similar ish right, you know right. I mean? um right. now i am trying to push them a little bit more towards pro tools uh -huh. but for a while it was you know straight up logic go, go to logic yeah i've always looked at you know i've always looked at the marketing for logic as genius at early like mm -hmm. back in the nine days because mm -hmm. i remember when the Macs were coming stock with GarageBand, like you even were in the ecosystem. Exactly. When you finally decided decided to take it serious, when you jumped up to Logic, which was the easiest, like, oh, let me just go to Logic now. I'm taking it serious. You looked at it and said, I know, I know this already. Exactly. I mean, I don't know if you remember when Ten first came out. When uh. you first open Logic, it mm. opens up with this window that's like, do you want the basic settings or the advanced settings? Mm -hmm. And the basic yes. settings makes it yeah. almost exactly like GarageBand. You know what I mean? Wow. Yeah. Gotcha. So, but now, I mean, with Pro Tools having the entry level versions and stuff, the I've intro. been kind of Pushing, pushing people, people. and I appreciate that, that from them. Shout out my guy uh, Garav. Uh, shout out G at Avid. That's our guy. Oh, and awesome. he, you know, I was really happy about him starting to make the entry. Not just him, but the whole company, like making Garav like the CEO. But mm -hmm. um, I was glad about them starting to make the push for the entry stuff because I've always told them I was like, "Yo, you're gonna lose these kids." I said, yeah. "These kids don't care about the name of the legacy of any of this stuff. They don't care. Fact. They want to get in. They want to know it. And once you got them in the ecosystem, it's different. Like these FL Studio guys and Ableton dudes are super like." like just heavy about their doll like and i was like that's what's being created like all these dolls are becoming more of like countries if that makes any sense mm -hmm. and so that's why i try to push people and i try to tell them like hey get them at least get them in the ecosystem to understand it because mm -hmm. at least some of these kids are coming up and not knowing a thing yeah, about yeah. uh pro tools at all you know i'm i'm blessed to be of the age where i got best of both worlds right? right so like i taught myself quote unquote i don't like saying that because it wasn't solely myself but like mm -hmm. i learned a lot of this on my own i didn't study music production or anything in school my degrees in 
business and entrepreneurship. Right. Um, but I also came up the traditional way, mm -hmm. interning at a big studio in Philly, working right. under mm -hmm. people. Right. And I got the best of both worlds in that aspect where I was able to learn their traditional stuff. Like uh -huh. I not I didn't walk into a studio for the first time with Uzi and saw a patch bay and didn't know what it was. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. So I learned the traditional stuff, but I also learned a lot of it on my own. So I developed my own kind of way of doing things right. and I had to teach myself a lot of things. But I think I see a lot of times now with people learning on their own, I think there's a lot of benefit to that. But I also, a big studio operates a certain way. And for if you sure. don't understand how that works, mm -hmm. you can get thrown into a position right. and not know what's going on. Right. And, you know, you know, when I was with Uzi, we were working at Jungle, and I love everybody at Jungle. The team oh, you were working at Jungle? Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. Those okay. Are, they're all my guys. Right. I love them all so much. They yeah. made my life Great amazing staff. for yeah. so long. Right. But there were some times where, like, we're in the room, and my assistant might be, you know, going to tell the runner what we need for food, and a patch needs to be fixed real quick. You right. need to know how to do that. Right, like, right. It doesn't matter right. how great you are right. at Pro Tools. If you don't know how to do that in that moment, right. you're going to look like a scrub. Right, like, yeah. right. Which you're going to look like a scrub. The best way like, to put it is, you look is. Sufficient. You know, and when it comes to like patch bays and stuff like that, I feel like I also come from the intern side of like, the only way I'm going to learn this or get a foothold in this is by... There's no internet. I'm not DMing artists. There was no such thing as a DM. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. I am going into a room and I'm looking to just kind of like be here to help everyone. So that's kind of where my education, I did have a formal education. I went to full sale as well. Mm -hmm. um, but interning at the studio and just getting to see things was how I learned everything. Like yeah. Yeah. Um, literally all my opportunities came from like one moment. You know what that's I mean? Same. Like everything, like it, it's kind of like that. What would you say is a moment in your career mm -hmm on the intern side of you where you showed up because you obviously you prepared preparation, preparation, and you were like knocked out the park and then that's where you felt like that's literally the work how my career got started. Right? How did you, so, yeah, where did you start um, I was interning at a studio in Philly called Studio Breed. Um, uh -huh. It was run by this guy, Anthony Bell. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, you remember the song like Golden by Jill Scott? Like yes. he wrote that. So he did stuff with Jill, Vivian Green, Jasmine. Uh -huh. Like he was in that kind of early 2000s R&B world yeah. that was heavy in Philly, right? He was right. one of the people in that. Um, I was just, I was I was doing a lot back then because um, I was in school and f a big part of my journey is that um, from high school, I wanted to work on Wall Street. Mm -hmm. like that's, yeah, that's what I wanted to do. In what specifically? What was it? Um, I did an internship when I was in high school at, at NASDAQ in Philly. The guy I was with, he was telling me about like, uh -huh. He was teaching me about Goldman and Morgan Stanley and how much money you can make out of college doing that. Right. And I, I enjoy, this is the part that people don't understand. I enjoyed the work. I right. love making spreadsheets. I still make spreadsheets. Like <laughs> I think it's it's similar. And I think that's one of the ways I got good at Pro Tools is right. I was already used to doing shortcuts in Excel. Right. Like, yo, okay. that's why you was able to. Why? Because you like spreadsheets. <laughs> he always says he was waiting. Looks he like was waiting. Excel no, I never use that window. By the way, I only I only use, I never, I use I only use the arrangement. But um, so in college, I was doing full course load, where fifteen or eighteen credits or whatever. Right. Interning at a wealth management company in Philly wow. and interning at a studio. Mm -hmm. So these days were like. Wake up at 8 a.m., class from like 9 to 4, go right. home, put on a shirt and tie, take the train downtown to Philly, right. go to the office till 8 p.m., go home, switch the clothes, studio, 5 in the morning, every single day. Right. Right? Um, I was just interning, cleaning the floors, wrapping the cables, right. going to the store. Classic. But also getting opportunity to like record some, because they were also, you know, developing artists and songwriters, so like record some of the songwriters in the, you know, in the smaller rooms and stuff. Right. But one day he just called me and he was like, yo, Ty Dolla Sign's coming. Mm-hmm. And it was like that classic, like, we called everybody, nobody's available. And he literally was like, if you come and you do it well, we're going to hire you. Wow. Ooh. And oh. I went. Right. And it went okay. Mm -hmm. We were having some computer issues and stuff, but it went well. We did a couple songs. Right. He stayed. It was a 12-hour session. I think he maybe stayed for like seven hours. Wow. He ran out of weed. And this was like back. I mean, you got to understand. This <laughs> yeah. is all 10 years ago. This yes. is, there was no like, it wasn't it was legal. Yep. There was no like was going like, on an app and getting. He was no. like, I don't smoke. He was like, "Do you, can you give me some weed? I was like. No, <laughs> he was like, I'm leaving. I was like, okay, great. Oh, like, but no, so that was that. And then same person, a couple months later, Ant was like, yo, I bought Jasmine Sullivan. I bought her, let me see if I remember everything, a duet. Uh -huh. um, the black one, not the silver one, the, the black two. one. So it was a yeah, the two. two. I think but not the two. three, it was the two, the black right. one. I bought her a duet. I bought her an iMac. I bought her some HS5s uh -huh. and a, either a 102 or 103. Uh -huh. It's at her house. Go set it up. Show her how to record herself in Logic. It's already on the computer and leave. I said lit. 
<laughs> I go. I go over there. She's not paying me no attention, right? Right. I set it. I set everything up. Right. I start to show her how to do it. I think she's like getting ready to go out. And just something in my head was like, she's not paying any attention here. She's not going to do this. Right. And it was a crossroad. And I was like, what am I going to do? I'm going to be honest with y'all. I just straight up lied. I was like, I don't do anything else other than go to school. I just told you I'm doing all these other things. <laughs> right. And I was like, here's my number. Text me if you want me to come back and record. I will record you. Text me if you want wow. me to come back. Yeah. Didn't hear from her for like two weeks. I was just like, okay, cool. I, you know, I shot. Mm-hmm. I shot, shot a shot. shot. Right. This is yeah. what it is. Right. Mm-hmm. Text come in. Yo, I'm not going to do this. Can you come? And that's how we started building that relationship. Wow. wow just, bro. Like that's that. insane. And yeah. you started recording just in the crib. Like, just it's like, oh, I got crib. you. And just came that's through. Just pulled up. Just pulled up in that's the crib. That's wild, bro. You know, like, this is back when... Um, the Waves licenses, you couldn't authorize them to like hard drives. So yeah. I would have to like log into my Waves account, authorize it on our computer, oh, and, deactivate yeah. when you did. And, and, de- and make sure I didn't forget to deactivate it. Because Judy was like, hey, Jasmine, I'm like, <laughs> could you sign out of my thing? Yeah, I, wow. Yeah. And so I, you know, I'm so thankful to her to being yeah. patient with me because right. when I first went over there, this is before I was even using Pro Tools and I was right. like just starting to use it. I didn't mm. know what I was doing. Right. I had right. no clue what I was doing. Um, but she was going to figure it out. You just was like, I'm just going to shoot. She trusted just... me from day one. Right. And, you know, I have a lot of respect for that. It right. taught me how to use my voice in the studio right. because mm-hmm. Jasmine is one of the best singers ever. She's probably the best <laughs> singer yes. of our time right Absolutely. now. And from day one, it was do a couple takes. What do you think about this? What do you mean? What do I think? You're like, yeah. are you? <laughs> Why are you asking me? I'm 19 years old. Respect though. But right. you have to build that confidence to be give that pushback when someone's yeah. asking. And right. you know, over those years, I was able to give that pushback. Like, you should do this over. We should try this and stuff, you know? Right. And she's a really gracious person. Right. You know, her mother who just, you know, passed away. She yes. was mm-hmm. incredibly nice to me. You know, there was times when she, after we were done late she'd drive me home like oh that's what's up that's fire like, you know it was Jeez, it was a really okay. great experience and right it taught it made me comfortable uh-huh. to working with artists right right you know M- one question about jasmine in particular yeah. um i i also highly agree with you as far as her being like one of the best vocalists Goodness. ever oh yeah Damn. um even before, even back in the Lion Tigers and big, like back mm-hmm, in those mm-hmm. days, like I remember, I was like, "Yo, this girl, she she's, can, she's, yeah. fine. she's the one." She's dope. My question to you is: obviously, you've recorded some of her newer stuff, like in this modern time mm-hmm. as well. What is a chain like for her, like in in a setting in your perfect setting, like where you're mm-hmm. like, "Okay, Jasmine's coming in for a session." What is like a set, like a vocal chain for her? That so, you go for? fun fact: I've never actually worked with Jasmine in the studio before, right? Really, <laughs> only ever worked with her in the crib, right? So, even like wow. Insecure, Lost Ones, those are two of the bigger ones that I worked on. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. recording those were both in the crib. One hundred three, wow. straight into the into the duet. Wow, straight up one hundred three into the duet, like. I don't even remember. I'm trying if if this is back 2015, 16, and yeah. we're going like, what was I even using back then? Probably a little Pro Q2 at that point. Pro Q2. I I remember <laughs> I was probably using just the CLA 2A. Right. Um, probably SSL channel. Right. I saved up my money to buy that SSL channel. Yo, and we all wanted it, bro. <laughs> Quick like, side note: I don't think the younger people understand how good that thing was. Three hundred and fifty dollars. Like I, yeah. sa- I saved up for that, man. Yeah, that there was, was no subscription. When I was talking about the Mercury. See, and that's the thing. That's why we talk about subscriptions sometimes. And we be like, I mean, sometimes, like when I sit, like for instance, I don't know. You saw that whole Waves debacle. Yes. When they switched to subscription, yeah. right? At, in the moment, I said. Oh yeah! If as me being a person that has bought my ways plugins yeah. for years, years and years, I was like, "Damn, this is kind of messed up. You about to close me out." But at the same time, I said, "Wait, let me look at the other side of the corner." And I thought about some kid that's like, "I'm just gonna pay twenty dollars a month and get every Everything. plugin." But that was nuts. So, so here's where you're gonna get pushback from me, though. Uh-huh. I am opposed to entry level people having every plugin. Oh, I hear you I because you don't. You'll never. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. <laughs> you'll never learn how to use your plugins. Right. And it's it's not how you learn. If you think of a studio, all right, cool. We have three 1176s for everything. Right. You need to learn exactly how they work. Right. And so then you take out the, the plugin from what's going on. So you're like, I know that if I need it to sound like this, I can go to this. Right. And mm-hmm. this works that way. Right. I remember for the longest, um, I turned the analyzer off on my Pro-Q. I didn't use the analyzer. Nice. I trained my ear. Right. Right. Um, so I think, I always tell people, I'm like, look, pick one compressor, learn how it works. Right. In pick one EQ, learn how it works. Uh-huh. Pick one saturation plugin, learn how it works. Mm-hmm. Right. And then you can know that you're not just flipping through presets and stuff. Because mm-hmm. one of the things I've seen in my career is I never know what room I'm walking into and what's going down in that room. Right. You know, right, and right. how are we going to make this work and stuff? Um, 
but to go back um yeah it was straight 103 into of course i would probably want something different but uh you know i mean you some of my work, homies man. yeah some of my homies um shout out to my guy justin miller and uh joe logic they're the ones that did most of her new album they're the gotcha. ones that won the grammys mm -hmm. on it and everything right, right. and so they i'm not sure if i feel like it might have been in 251 but i'm not 100 percent. okay you know um but yeah for me when i was when i was when we did insecure that was straight right 103 mm -hmm. With an average duet, duet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that is crazy, bro. And that's that's your home setup right now. I that's say, his, yeah. he, said, he said, "I got that right um, now." Is it, was I'm it big on a duet. I'm very. We are big, very big. They've yeah. actually sent us some stuff and stuff like that. Yeah. And I'm very big. Uh, I have to do at three. And at first, I was recording with my Prism Sound Titan. Okay. I love that interface to death. And when I would travel, I would take the duet three. And what impressed me the most, and what made me stick to it, is when I traveled and then I brought my session back, like home. I was like, okay, I traveled. I recorded on duet three. I come back home and I would ab like you know record my second verse. Mm -hmm. and I'm like. I'm good. Like yeah. I felt really good about it from a five thousand interface to that duet. So it, it just makes me like laugh. That I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, somebody else like really, really likes that piece. I keep telling people about that piece for sure. Yes. Man, I got a question. Okay, as a DJ, right? Sure. Mm -hmm. So as a DJ, I listen to music different in the sense of I know what moments catch people, mm -hmm. and when I turn on that Uzi record mm -hmm. and that nigga says. <sighs> <laughs> yeah, let's talk about it. We, we can talk about that whole experience. And I just, was going there. So going back to where we were, right? Uh -huh. yeah. That is 103 straight into the Apollo in a living room. No treatment. Like reflection wow. filter. <laughs> reflection filter. That's right. it. Four in the morning, 103 straight into wow. the Apollo. That's it. That's it. Because oh, I, I was going to ask him about that. Like the, okay, so this is going to sound so silly, but this is the one yeah, platform sure. I can do this on. When he's, that moment where it's like, pop, pop, pop. Like, how are yeah. you capturing that without... The plosives and and stuff like that, like that. Ah, ah like um, all those. I'm trying to. So sound this effects. is the hard part about that song. Uh -huh. That was like song number four of that night. So I don't oh fully God. remember. Oh. So this is the thing. Um, over <laughs> I, I've spent three and a half years with him. We made 1,200 finished songs and Whoa. probably 2,000 started. Right. So I don't remember a lot of right. individual yeah. songs. Right. 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 I, um, Jeez. Yeah. But in general, no, if I knowing me, um, pop filter, you know, about this far. Right. I, do, I usually do about that far. Uh -huh. Um. Mesh ones, not the metal ones. I don't, right. the metal ones don't work. A lot of I've been hearing, I've been seeing that a no lot more. People, we use the metal one at my studio uh -huh. during COVID because uh -huh. then we could spray it down and wipe it down in between right. sessions. Right, it was easy to clean. Yeah, but right. um, I would just replace it, you know, every couple months. Um, right, the mesh one, um, and then I'm gonna RX it right after. I might RX it the next take, like while he's recording the next take, I might be RXing that one. Right, you know right, straight up. Because I um, I use the keyboard shortcut menu in my computer where I set it so that. You know, I use the full keyboard, so right. F13 to F19 don't do anything. Okay. So I set it so that if I press one of them, it opens up that. Got USB. you. So you already mapped. You know, it we'll talk about it later with Soundflow. I would do it differently now. This is before I had that, but uh -huh. yeah. So I might RX it in the moment. Right. You know what I'm saying? But that's how we're you know doing that. Right. Um, and then that intro part, we added that later. How it like slows down to you know. Yeah. So that was that was a later addition. For gotcha. The that was something song. that you did later, but that was like yeah. song number four that night. So you guys were just yeah. obviously just Working. running it and just going oh, yeah. and stuff like that. No, you we said had you a, went, was recorded with a 103 mm -hmm. into uh, Apollo. 103 into Apollo mm -hmm. in the console. I'm doing the SSL as the preamp. I've okay. tried them all. Uh -huh. That one works the best for me. Gotcha. And then I'm using the CL1B. I can probably pull it up on which here. Which one? Because with him and I are right now scanning the internet for which CL1B emulation so we like. So this is before they had the new one. So this is oh. going to be the older one. Which from what company? Um, from no, this is in the console in, in oh, the UAD. Oh, console. the console. Yeah, UAD. But now they have two versions. This is like the first version. Oh, okay, got right? you. Um, and so it is with my standard CL1B settings. This might cause a little controversy, <laughs> but I only use it in fixed. Oh, okay, mm. interesting. Yeah. Mm. I only use it in fixed. Uh, we was talking about TZO, uh the other day uh, about like how he goes between like uh, fixed and manual sometimes just to get like some sounds and stuff like that. What what you like the sound of fixed though? I I got used to the sound of fixed because the problem was. Um, a lot of studios, it's in the rack uh -huh. and it's susceptible to getting bumped a uh -huh. lot, uh -huh. right? And mm. so if it gets bumped, I got to set it back. This is before I started being like, if I'm doing there and I know TZO says the same thing, you take it out the rack and put it right next to me, right? Because wow. I can't have somebody bumping it because I've had that happen where somebody bumps it mid-take, the game shoots to zero. Now they're looking at me and I'm looking at them and I don't notice that it's going on. Yeah. Like maybe they just stop rapping. Wow. You know what I mean? Because that was, that was the problem. Um, hmm. I can't see over the computer a lot of times. So sure. I can't see the artist, right? right. Um, but I do it. I have it where the gain is equidistant between um, zero and ten, so it's around five. Uh -huh. The ratio is usually a, 
around four to one okay. in that range. And then the threshold is between minus 10 and minus 20. Gotcha. And I'm looking for, um, and I have it on fix, and I just turn both attack and release all the way over because it doesn't matter if it's on fix. Right, if it's on right? fix, right. Um, and I'm looking to try to keep that needle between mm -hmm. three and seven. Okay, I was going to ask you, yeah. like, what's your Between what you three and reduction? seven, but, like, if it's we're hitting five, uh -huh. that's, like, the sweet spot right. on, on the louder parts, right? right. Um, and then um, I need it right next to me because especially with Uzi, I'm a fiddler, right? Like I am constantly, constantly riding, fate, like riding. A, right. Yeah. Even, even if, um, you know, cause we did a lot of recording in hotel rooms and apartments mm -hmm. and stuff and just for logistics, it uh -huh. never really made a lot of sense for me to have a whole rack of gear to travel. I tried right. it. Right. I, it was a lot. Right. <laughs> so right. it's just easier where like, it's one, one of my proudest packing achievements is I can pack an entire suitcase in a, in a check suitcase. I mean, I'm talking like. In a check. Yes. Right. So in between my backpack and a check suitcase, Y'all not gonna believe me, but I had a reflection filter, a mic stand, a pair of Kara K fives, cables, the Apollo, a um, Nero um, monitor controller, uh -huh. so I can have the monitor controller for like multiple headphones and the aux, sure. yeah. all the cables and backups, everything in the suitcase. Right. It's, and it's only like five or six pounds overweight, so you just paid a little fee. Yep, you oh, paid a fee. Like, throw it on invoice, paid a fee, throw it right. on. Yes, and then in my backpack is like the laptop, Two pairs of um, Audio Technica headphones, uh -huh. um, the Apollo power cables, chargers, extra charger. So I always have, I always travel with two laptop chargers. Right. One that I leave, because, you know, we do the setup like in his hotel room. Mm -hmm. So one that I leave there or one that I would leave at the studio and right. one that I have at home. So right. I, yeah. So you don't, because you know how it is. Well, because I, I hate that when I have my laptop charger and I leave it somewhere and I'm down. Like yeah. if I leave my laptop, <laughs> you just the king right here. Leave your laptop charger and can't work, can't do nothing. Oh, yeah. So it's one of those two. things where, like, if you're serious about your career, spend the 80 bucks and get multiple. Facts. So, like, For now sure. I have charger that stays in my backpack uh -huh. i have a, a charger at the crib and then i have i have a thunderbolt dock at my studio got so you that okay. charges my laptop as well uh -huh. but yeah no we straight in with the with the just want to rock and right. then just recorded it and right just there in the crib. It day and packed it up and called it there in the crib the only edits i did uh -huh. um it's kind of like the the pop brain in me is okay. at the end of the song when he's doing the buh, buh. so yeah. though that's just one of them because he did it right. and it was just gradually drifting off so right. i just took the best one and just and just oh, chop yeah mm. and, and, and copied it all out oh it feels nice. natural it feels like that's what he's doing in my head i was well, like might, I know so it might have been like two or three of them okay but it's like it's the same ones over and over and i put right. them right on beat and got you yes wow. i felt like it was uh he, i was like i know he lightheaded doing this like oh, <laughs> no like, that yeah, was I mean, crazy start to finish from picking the beat uh. to because here's the thing here's the thing about recording him right the, uh. the way it would go is i would get beats from all the producers we work with right put them in folders very it's crazy organized how i did it but like Goes through, plays them. He's like, "That's the one." I mark it with a gray tag, uh -huh. load it up, uh -huh. and we're going. And like, that's it, like straight up. Between picking the beat and going, I mean, we're talking. It's like two minutes, if even. Right. Like that. He's just in there, flying, just flying the through that stuff. Yeah. Wow. There's gotcha. no writing. There's no. It's just like he hears it. He goes in there. Right. Going. It just knocks it out. But yeah, for, so from start to finish, for just want to rock. I mean, we're talking. 20 minutes oh my god. Holy crap. <laughs> I want to say 20 minutes. Right. And then you know, a special shout out. Um, to Cannon and to Leslie Brathway for trusting me with that one right. because Ooh. essentially what happened was we did the song right he sent it to the producer the producer had a little bit of a TikTok following because uh -huh. he other than producing he was kind of a dancer in that space mm. right? got you content creator post it starts going crazy right label starts calling like yo time What's for that? that drop like yeah. what What's are we that? doing yeah. so I you know knowing my role in this situation right hit Cannon because Cannon's in charge of the whole thing really yeah. you know? right and he's been an amazing mentor and OG to me right. um, I'm like yo Get the stems ready for Leslie. He's like, you got it. Right. I was like, what do you mean I got it? Right. He's like, yo, we got to get it done. Push it over the finish line. I was like, you like, you want me to do? Oh, that's <laughs> how that happened. That's how it happened. Oh, that's yeah. Awesome. Made a couple little tweaks. Sent it to Colin. It was out. I was like, awesome. he was like, we're gonna keep it. Like he was like, keep it as close as possible because we didn't have the time for to go back and forth with him yeah. to prove it. We're like, we gotta yeah. just push it. Right. So yeah, and, I, and it's a, it's wow. a true blessing. And you know, even that relationship that I, I developed with the two of them, like. Right. Just the learning. I mean, right. I, you know, I'll tell y'all tell y'all a story about that. You sure, know? yeah, um, man, please. His his. So I did a couple projects with Uzi. Um, mm -hmm. We did the Pluto and Baby Pluto project. I didn't mm -hmm. do the whole thing. I did some of it. Right. Um, and then me and Eric, who's Futures Engineer, we mixed a couple of those songs together. Mm -hmm. So that was cool. Then we did the Red and White EP over the summer. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Right. So we had all the songs. It was time to mix. Right. Right. Uh, 
Ken is like, yo, we're going to sign to Leslie. And I'll be honest, I was like, man, I could do this. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I could do, do it, this. man. Like, come do on, this. give me a shot. He was like, you're not going to send them. You're coming to Atlanta and you bring the files and we're going to I was like, man, I can't go home. Because I worked a lot back then. I used to work. 10 p.m., 10 a.m., seven days a week, right? Right. So I was like, man, I got a week off. Like, I'm trying to go on vacation. Yeah. He's like, no, you're coming to Atlanta. I was right. like, coming to Atlanta. Right. So I was like, what was one of the greatest things that ever happened? Because I came to Atlanta. Uh -huh. Leslie is amazing. Yeah. Gave him the files. He's like, okay, you need to do this better, that better, this better. Like, would sit there and tell me what I was doing wrong. Tell me how to make my mixes better. Right. And then, you know, we have like a week. So... He would do some mixes there, do some mixes at home. We'd make some tweaks. And at the end of every session, it would just be the three of us sitting there. And I'm just getting this wisdom. They're just telling me about life and oh my experience gosh. in the industry. And I'm just soaking right. it all in. Right. And the reason that I have so much respect for him and why that was such a value experience mm -hmm. was when it was time for the album. Right. He was like, you got it. So I did wow. so he 18 just put, of he them. Just pushed it to and you. so Leslie did five of them. Three oh. of them were songs that he had done for that project. Right. And so like 30 mix were not. We need to remix them. Right. And then two of them, one of them I started the mix, um, and he was like, yeah, this needs to be, he's like, I want this to sound like one of his older records that I mix, so I want to do that mm, one. Gotcha. And then there was, um, he wanted to do one of the rock ones, and I was like, great. Okay. Got it. Right. But I have so much respect for him because he left a lot of money on the table because he could have easily have been like, he's not I got ready. it. Mm -hmm. I got it. Yeah. And that's why I have so much respect for him and Cannon. Like, that's real. And even Cruz, like, that's real. That's what real OGs do. Yes. Right. They're like, I see you're ready. Right. And that's why I'm so happy that I, I went and I uh -huh. learned. Oh. And he was like, like, one of the things he was like, you're not pushing his vocal loud enough. Interesting. He was like, you need to push it louder. That's why it doesn't sound like you need to push it louder. And he said, he has this one specific frequency. Take this one, like, you'll hear it. So this one frequency, take that out. Right. Push the vocal up. You got it. And just to get the feedback, to go in the studio and learn from them, like, right. It it was oh, yeah. it was it, it, it crazy. crazy like even when you're telling me and obviously I've watched uh uh, uh Leslie Bradford ad nauseum mm -hmm. and you know I've always watched that I I feel like he's actually expressed that technique where he's like hey sometimes I'll notch out certain frequencies because I want it to be louder and I know that those frequencies too loud will hurt their ears yeah. so just even like th those types of things and him knowing like I know where that frequency is for Uzi mm -hmm. is 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 honestly it's baffling to me that he, like he's actually and the simplicity of his of his approach you know it's nuts it's yeah. nuts and right. it's you know to see it and see it work and it's like okay mm -hmm. just those little things but you know i just have so much respect for right. for both of them and you know how they've empowered me over the years it's right. amazing right heck yeah Happy. what's up with you i want to know what those doohickeys are Oh table. yeah, should, should, we, should, we, should we get into? Should we get into I walked my... in and it was bro. He was yeah, yeah. so I had to stop him because he was explaining it to me, and I was like, "This is like this, this is pod, this so, is for yeah. the pie." Oh yeah, please, um, sure, dude. First of all, let me just set the stage. So long story short, he was like, he, he hit me right. Shout out to Cruz by the, by the way for making shout this happen. Yeah, shout please. out to Cruz. He he's the one who put us all together. I really appreciate it, Cruz. Cruz is amazing. Um, and Ben and I started talking and he was like, Hey, you want me to bring my laptop? I said, sure. I said, yeah, you can bring your laptop. He came in and, oh, with his book bag and oh, said, yeah. Hey man, let me just set up. He, he pulled out a bunch of toys. Um, <laughs> it was explaining it to me and showing me some of the stuff. So kind of let people know like what this is that you have, especially yeah. that crazy thing you showed me. Oh, early. for sure. Please. And just a quick, quick brief shout out to Cruz. I mean, Cruz, uh, yeah. Cruz taught me how to be an engineer. I'll tell everybody that. That's and not from like the... Not from the how to use Pro Tools. Because right. Cruz mm -hmm. will be the first one to tell you. If he has a Pro Tools question, he's going to call me about it, right. Right? right? But Cruz taught me how to be an engineer. He right. taught me, like, this is how you operate in the room. This is how you be a professional. Right. This is how you are in a room with the celebrity and how you play your role and stay in your place. Like, he right. taught me all that. And he empowered me constantly, right. even to this day. And right. it's just wow. such a blessing That's you know, to That's have crazy. him. He's a good shout out, shout out to guy. Philly, man. Yeah. Because yeah. Like, y'all yeah, love each other. Yeah, he's an amazing guy. Um, So what do we have on the table here? Sure. Yes. Um, I left my headphones in my bag. I should probably grab them. Something that's huge for me is I am not into like excuses. Got you. I think because I spent so long as a recording engineer in a very high pressure, high stress situation where I said we're working 10 p.m. to 10 a.m. Right. seven days a week, uh -huh. mm -hmm. Christmas, weekends, doesn't matter. Right. Working. So there can be no excuses for like, I'm in a new room. I don't know what's going on. Like if a mix needs to get done, a mix needs to get done and I'm not going to let the sonic the room be my limitation so right, i was right. like all right what am i gonna do i'm gonna optimize my mobile workflow as much as possible right and that requires investment right so mm -hmm. we have our lcd and we have our odyssey lcd x's these are amazing mm. only downside is you cannot use these in public because they are 
fully they, open back. Yeah. Like, oh, you yeah. hear everything. Mm-hmm. everything. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right. But they have a closed back version, but the um, the low end response on the open back version. All right, like, but, so mm-hmm. you notice that with the open backs that you feel like you get a better response oh, on the low end. Way better yeah. response on the low end. Yeah, gotcha. Um, so we have that. Uh-huh. And then this amazing company um, that I've been working with recently out of the UK called Chord Audio. But yesterday, shout out to Blue at Republic Studios. Mm-hmm. He it showed us this headphone amp. I don't know if you was there yet, but he showed us this, and he, it was like a, it was expensive. And I was like, yeah. he was like, it's a headphone amp. And I was like, what is this? Please yes. explain. Yeah. What this so headphone this is amp this is. is my Hugo Two from Chord. Um, this is my headphone amp, and it's amazing. Like, <laughs> like it's amazing. The the fidelity that you get is like. Right. One of the things that I feel is is limited in headphones is you don't get the full sounds. You don't get the full sound stage, right? right. It, it mm-hmm. feels small. You don't feel the width. Yes. You feel the width with this thing. Interesting. Like you can, you feel the width. Right. You don't need to use any right. headphone adjustments or anything. You told me you mixed like a whole. What, I a mixed whole majority of Friday's album and a, most of the Pink Tape with this setup. With that oh, setup, wow. with the headphones. Yep. Which blew my mind because I've always been the type of person that I was not anti headphones, but I've always not liked how I translate in headphones because I always feel like for some reason I mix smaller. My mix always feels smaller when I try to mix in headphones. So that when you told me about that and the fidelity, yeah. and then you said, yo, I can hear the soundstage, I was like, oh, yep. that's my problem with and the then, headphones, okay. Um, I do just two minor adjustments um, mm-hmm. with the headphones. One of them is I have a, um, my guy Ryan Schwab, he he does all most of my masters. Uh-huh. He's also the one that uh, made the the gold clip plugin. Yeah, which is, I, I knew it. I was like, we've been talking about him a Oof, lot. He's been coming up a lot. It's nasty the gold plugin. clip is nasty. Yeah, gold clip is nasty, <laughs> clip bro. Is na- Ryan's oh, my dude. guy. The gold um, ooh, the gold clip is nasty. It's right. on it's on the master. It's on the drum bus. It's yeah. on the bass bus. It, yeah, gold clip, which you can get out of the low end with gold clip is nasty. But right. Ryan also masters most of the mixes that I do. Okay, um, mm. and so he has the same setup. Mm-hmm. Um, and he sent me a um EQ preset. Just subtle adjustments. I mean, we're talking like no more than one dB right. up or down. Uh-huh. So nice, subtle adjustment. Just to adjust. Every headphone has a certain sound. Just to adjust for that. Right. And then I use the Good Hertz uh, can opener plugin for the crosstalk. Oh, wow. Yeah. So Good Hertz. Yeah. It's, so the Good Hertz plugin. Yeah, so yeah, good Hertz plug- yeah, no, yeah no, no by problem. the way. I've, so, I've never heard of it. So the um, can openers made by Good Hertz. They make really great, simple plugins, right? Uh-huh. Um, and what you're getting is you're getting the crosstalk. So when you're listening to a pair of speakers, right. you're not just hearing the left and the right. You're hearing a blend of the left and the mm-hmm. right. And so this gives you that in headphones, right? So right. it'll bleed a little bit of the right signal into the left, gotcha. a little bit of the left signal into the right. So you're mm-hmm. getting that. Feel. That helps you with the soundstage significantly. Exactly. So you yeah, put this you on know. your mix on the on, on the, the print. On the print. So on this doesn't print. get printed. Yeah, it's just oh, for gotcha. headphones. Right. right. I'm not right. printing with that. That's just so I can monitor mm-hmm. more accurately in headphones. Right. So we yeah. have this tiny EQ adjustment, and then the crosstalk. That's really it. So we're not using any of the head tracking, none of that, right? Right. Um, and so, yeah, we have headphones going into the amp, and it just, what I can get in headphones is what I can get in speakers. Right. That's like, insane. <laughs> Are you, and you're not using any of, like, the emulation stuff or any of that stuff. Like, nope. you know, there's a bunch of emulation, yeah. like, headphones, it's stuff this, like that. And I just you're listen fine. to a ton of music right. um, just yeah. to acclimate my ears to yeah. it. Yeah. Right. Um, right. And now I feel fully confident. I mean, no one has ever said, yo, did you mix this Friday album in headphones? They're just like, no, it sounds good. Right. Like, yeah, yeah, for sure. Bro, I would have never guessed that. Like, yeah, you know, I've it. always been the type of person that headphones have always made me feel like, oh, I want to hear the sound stage. I feel like I don't get the full picture. But I mean, with the Good Hertz, which thank goodness I have tape right now because I'm going to run this back <laughs> for myself. The Good Hertz, and then you're using obviously the Korg. It's Korg? Cord. Korg. Cord. Yeah, uh, Korg. Headphone amp and stuff yep. like that. That's really cool. And you. I, when I looked at it, uh, I see that it's just two outputs for headphones. Like yeah, just so two there's out two headphones. outputs for headphones, uh-huh. and then there's an RCA out, um, but it's it's really just a headphone amp, right? Right. Two outputs for headphones, and then it's battery powered, so you can you can run it off, you know, plugging it in, but it's right. also battery powered, so it's mobile, and then you know, just plug it into the computer. It has a has a uh, high pass filter. I don't really use that. Right. Um, and then. Yeah. It just goes and that's it. It has this cool little slider for the volume, which is fun. It's that's like crazy. A, it's like this little jewel for the volume. So that's cool. Oh, that's fly. It changes colors, you know. Yeah. So somebody just want to make something super fly. Um, and and yeah, it, it's cool. And then on the other side, you also have yes. now this is what blew my mind. Yeah, let's get into it. Yeah, yeah so please. Yeah, this is just it's my headphone setup. It, right. it came out of necessity, just uh, travel. Right. You know, we, I spent a lot of time right. living in hotels with Uzi. I lived in hotels for two years. Right. right? And so Work has to get done. Right. And, I'm and you not, need the best quality sound that you yeah, possibly get. I'm, I'm yeah. not one for excuses. You I hear you. Nobody, nobody wants to hear, yo, I couldn't get your mix done because I wasn't in the studio. Nobody's trying to hear that. I hear you. <laughs> like, so we have to like, get the work done. Right. Um, over here, this is my stream deck. Right. Um, so stream deck is usually used for streamers. Streamers use these things all the time. Right. This is how they switch the camera angles. You said you wanted to do the sound effects. You would do it yeah. with something like this, right? Uh-huh. Um, there's this great software called Soundflow. Right. And Soundflow allows for 
deep and robust automation of Pro Tools. Mm -hmm. And so in conjunction with a good friend of mine um, named Nathan, we code this thing to do whatever I want. That's what was throwing me off. The <laughs> fact that she was like, oh, like, okay, so let me just open up just the, the, on the service level. He pressed a button on the Stream Deck and basically it did, it was like, if you're a Photoshop person, you know what a Photoshop action is, where mm -hmm. basically I'll like say record in Photoshop and I'll press a bunch of buttons like, okay, I, I know this process. I click that, then I click that, then I add a gradient here and you record the action. And when you record that action, now I can literally press play on the action. It, it'll, and it'll do that for anything I want. He basically showed me this in Pro Tools where he pressed the button and it did an action like that yeah. just to open up the spear for it. So oh yeah, no, break and it I'll, down. Uh, I'll show. Let me see if I if I rotate this so you guys can see the screen. Fam, well. he pressed a button and it did yeah, all so the I'll, actions. I'll walk you guys through. And again, this can be fully customizable right. to whatever you need, right? right? And so I'll just show you guys some of mine, just some simple ones. So on my print track, in the same insert slots in my template on the print track right. is. Um, this uh, Luffs meter from this company, I think it's Yulene Luffs meter. Oh, Yulene, yeah, yeah, yeah we yep, got that it. one, okay. and then the just the waves paths analyzer, right? Right. So I press this button, there it is. Whoa. Closes. Press that one, there it is. Doesn't, and then you're like, okay, the track's on the screen. <laughs> no, it's not. Boom. So even Boom. it doesn't, doesn't matter, matter where it is, it just knows yep. where it's at, it's, and that's it's it. It's set because that's the only track in the session that, that the input it. is print. Oh, so okay. it knows like. The, the code is essentially saying, find the track where the input is print, right. mm -hmm. open up the third insert slot. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Oh, wow. And so, yeah, we need That's these. Fire. Boom, boom. Um, you know, when you're when you're working on your mix, if you're printing, I always print my mixes back, even though I'm 100% in the box. Right. It forces me to listen to it. And yeah, I, I promise you, every time I've sent an offline bounce, there was a mistake. Yeah. Right? Like, <laughs> every offline bounce I sent had a mistake in it. Right. So I listen to everyone, right? So I'll load the reference. Uh -huh. um, onto the print track and if right. i press this mix button you'll see the input flipping between so again i don't have to have that track i could be working on the bottom i could have some you know the vocals on the bottom right. and then i could press this and it'll come AB. up no matter what yep to right. ab that got gotcha. you um some of these other ones are pretty simple um probably pointed towards the camera so facts but, um, and please make sure you show that super difficult one that you did yeah, where, where your sure. computer got taken over mm -hmm. yeah so um <laughs> Some of these other ones are just like opening and closing stuff, but right. this one right here, it says print deck. And if I press this, it opens up like some other automation that we made for printing. Uh -huh. And then, you know, since I'm old school, you see like the old school printer. Yes. <laughs> Which I thought was funny. I was, yeah. like, <laughs> I was like, yo, you I can start... customize the icons, right? So if I press the old school printer, let me select a little bit so you guys can see what's going on. Yeah, sure. Let me get it in. I'm not going to lie. I'm immediately going. I wish I caught this on Black Friday. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. So if I select that, so essentially what's about to happen, when I press the print button, what's going to happen is um, something I, I'm big on is uh -huh. every single bounce in my session has a, every, I'm sorry, every single bounce on my computer has a save as with the exact same name. Right. Exactly the same name. I learned this because like I said, with Uzi, we did 1,200 songs and they would all just be in a song folder. Right. And if he's like, pull up that song, I know that if I spotlight, if I just press enter, mm -hmm. spot copy that name, spotlight search it, the session's going to come. Right, right. you know you have it because you, you name. named it right, correctly. Yeah. Like right. I open up the save as menu, copy it, and then I bounce, right? Gotcha. So okay. essentially what's going to happen is it's not going to go through the save as menu. It's going to go through the actual file settings. Right. It's going to copy the name of this session, uh -huh. rename the print track, print that, export it at the, um, export a wave and an MP3 at the exact sample rate and bit depth. And you know when you print something in Pro Tools, you get that like underscore 01. Yes. It's going to trim that too. Okay. And it's going to open up the folder where these things are located at with one one button, button. so watch press it renamed oh, i'm just nah. print i'm just printing a little bit so yeah, it's not gonna sure, take the whole sure, time sure, sure. so it's doing the okay and then oh my god yep <laughs> boom here it goes Fam. exporting it's oh. changing the, the sample rate that's the wave it's the matrix <laughs> yeah. like, this and is what the ai was made for yep. what are we oh. so now that's the wave there's the mp3 sometimes it it does that but with the mp3 now, if i open up I go back and I open up folder for this session. If I right. go into the bounces, you'll see it. There it is at there the top. There it is. Wave an MP3. Yo, Zaire, cut this, cut that up. That whole, and, and put like a cyborg uh, sound behind the, it. The transformer. That is How'd insane. How'd you do that? Um, I cannot take any credit for that. That is my guy, Nathan. He coded that whole thing for me. Wow. I just told him, because I had done it essentially the way that you were saying in Photoshop. Like right. there's a way in the SoundFlow software where you can like record yourself your doing these things. Right. I did that. And he was like, I sent it to him. And he was like, yeah, I can. Mine was slow because it was, he was like, yeah, boom, boom, boom. Sent me some code back and did that. Right? And did that whole thing. Yep. Some other ones I have on here that I can show you guys. Um, it's my setup deck. This is my assistant. And so y'all, you can see the way my template is laid out is fairly simple. Um, 
we have everything's in folders, right? Uh -huh. um, I don't love the folders, but I can solo the folder. That's right. what I like about mm. it. Right. So at the top of the session, um, you'll see that there's the four returns. There's drums, music, bass, vocals. Everything ends up there. Right. Those go to the, the sub bus with some bus processing that gets printed. Uh -huh. Late, further down in the session. To everyone that's listening to the audio, he's scrolling down yep. at oh, the yes. bottom of the session. Um, yep. There's folders for everything. Right. So there's four music folders. I think they're like samples, synths, uh, right. keys, samples, synths, and uh, keys. Yeah. They're all the same. Right. Sometimes, you know, it's like, okay, this one, this song might have guitars. Okay, I'm just going to put it in the sample folder. Right. Whatever. They're I all get the same. Saying, right. And then we have A drums and B drums. The right. way I look at that is the A's are the main, so kicks, snares, right. 808s, so I can compress them together. Got mm -hmm. you. B's are everything else. All the percussions, hats, whatever. So, Makes question sense. question for you, just yeah. stop right there. So, with the, you like to compress or you like to process your kick, snare, uh, kick, snare, what else uh, together? Yeah, kick, snare, 808, clap, like the main drums. Right. So you process, like to compress the process. Yeah, those together. are getting processed together. Okay. And then the rest of the drums are going into the a whole other yeah and they're not getting processed that much they usually don't need that much i get you right you know what i mean right and then we have a folder for sound effects and then we have we have two lead tracks so if there's like a feature or something or leads right. backgrounds cool right uh -huh. so one of the bot i'm always thinking about what are the bottlenecks of my process uh -huh. one of them was i get stems from somebody or i get a pro tool session i have to go through and i have to or and, you know i'm not i'm not in the spot where i thought it made sense to bring an assistant to do that right. um just because of the workflow and the travel and stuff. Right. So I was I was talking to him. I was like, how can we make this work? So now we have buttons where if you load up stems, you press, let's say it's going into the A drum. Let's say it's a kick. You press that. It gets moved into the kick folder. It gets colored and it gets sized the way, because I'm big on the sizing, right? Mm. Wow. It's sized the way I want to. So let me show you guys that real quick. organization purposes, yeah. Wow. Wow, that's insane. And by the way, this is, you know, I've always known this piece of equipment for more gaming stuff. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. I've never seen it like, or thought about it using it for like DAW stuff. So if, if you see, I just made a blank track on there, right? Right. And so like, if I press, let's see, if I press the keys, because we can see the keys on the screen, right? So uh -huh. watch what happens. Changed to the right color and moved into the key folder. So now wow. if I open up the key Man. folder. So basically, if you're watching, he literally had a blank track, which he deemed to be what he wanted for the kick A, well, for drums A, and he hit that and it... Color coded it, moved it, and yep. put it all the way over. And you here see that today. blank track at the bottom of the screen? Yeah, that's, that's, that's it, yeah, and it's, it's done. So, yeah. so you just click it and organizing like crazy. Yeah. Go ahead. Interns, y'all thought y'all working for free was gonna save y'all jobs. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean it's now work it's, fast, work fast. Not it's playing. It, it's it's just crazy. very helpful, and it, it's incredibly helpful for the workflow. So now yes. when I get the stems in, instead <laughs> of that process taking forever, it's just quick solo. What is this? It's a kick, or you know sometimes they're labeled, sometimes they're not. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. What is this? Boom. Hit the button, right. goes into the folder. Now yeah. we're just and flying around. It. And it's a very, it seems to be a very like, um, what's the word? Uh, practical way of like keeping you locked in within the session, like while you're trying to organize everything. Yeah, you know, because exactly. it doesn't take you that long to doesn't do it. Take That's that long anymore. Heck yeah, man! This whole um, setup. Is what else we have on here? Crazy. We have our stem deck. We love the stem deck. What is that for? If you if you're working with labels, you got to send stems for Atmos. Right. 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 Oh. And so now, so the way my stem deck works, this was something that I found. It's, there's lots of one. Um, there's one Bounce Butler is built. Yes, that's right what now. we were talking about before. Uh, Bounce yeah. Factory. Bounce, 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 bleh, sorry. <laughs> bounce Butler is separate. Bounce Factory is something mm -hmm. that Andrew Sheps built out in Soundflow. Oh, huh. He has like his wow. own bouncing thing. Oh, right. um, the one I found another one in there that I liked, modified it a little bit. So essentially what will happen is I don't, so I don't rename my tracks right. ever, right? I leave them as the names that they send them as. And I put, I use, I heavily utilize the comments in Pro Tools. Right. A lot. Hmm, good. So if you look, even at this session, the track names are in the comments. Got you. Because then if somebody's like, yo, because sometimes this happens, they'll be like, yo, we re we're replacing this specific track. Right. If I had renamed them, I wouldn't know what that you was. You would be like, I don't know what that is. Exactly. Right. exactly. I use the comments a lot. Right. Some, another huge tip um, that I've come up with over the years that I think will help people is if you do a mix right. yeah. and somebody says, yo, I love this, mm -hmm. turn the vocal up 2 dB. Write down in the comment what your vocal level is at right so then because sometimes what happens turn it back down yep where yeah. was it it's written down in the comments I hear so you. when i before i make any mixed adjustments right. i'll write it to, even if it's like turn up the reverb mm -hmm. i'll write down what the value of that return is what right before. in the comments right? right so when it's time to print the stems uh -huh. before. what happens is i just select the mix right mm -hmm. um i press this button right here that says Copy comments to track names so right. we can see oh, wow. it right here. Oh, wow. Okay. Damn, you even made no more way. for the comments? Yeah. So, like I said, I named the tracks in the comments. So right. now when I need to rename them, I just press this. And you see it copied the comments. Copy the comments the and name. put it to the track name. Yeah, yes, I select um, which tracks 
So what you do with this is you select, if you want to, let's say you want to bounce all your drums together. Right. You'll select them. He's selecting his drums right now. So well, I'm just selecting a couple tracks, right? right. Mm -hmm. And I press this button that says group assist, and you'll see it comes up on the screen, and you name this group, right? What, right, got you. And so okay. you'll group wow. the ones you want, and then the ones that you don't want in a group, I you I have this other group. It's uh -huh. called four individual bounce. Right. And then you just run the command, and it will bounce all every track that you set in that group. It'll solo those, bounce it, re-import it so they're in the bottom of the session. Wow. And so now all the stems are being bounced cleanly and, and, and stuff like that yep. I, I like that you stopped you you stayed on um uh, we were talking about uh atmos and stuff yes. like that and one thing i was even talking about with a few engineers recently was when you have to bounce for atmos do you uh, one thing that always kind of i don't want to say it gave me a little haste or maybe go well how are other people doing it is because say for instance you have like a drum bus right like mm -hmm. you said and you're doing multi processes on that drum bus that five tracks are feeding right so when you're doing the stems for that or just the individual tracks it's like okay well i have this soloed but i want this to actually get the processing of that actual bus that was there as well so my question to you is how are you doing that it does that work where it's going through literally the bus as well when it's soloed yeah. and everything oh it's gonna bounce God. everything yeah it's gonna bounce everything so if, if that drum is being processed in that a drum group and then there's more processing mm -hmm. on yeah. the drum bus and the master yeah i leave everything on mm -hmm. so i'm just soloing that track and i'm bouncing everything I'm and leaving. it goes through right. that bus and everything just because it's, it's not it's not doing like a like a shift command e export it's bouncing yeah. that track individually yeah yeah, yeah. It's yeah. bouncing that track individually <clears throat> Uh, and then re-importing so it to the bottom. Yeah, right so right now right. when it's time for stems, right. all I'm doing is pressing that button to rename the comments, the right. tracks to the comments. Right. Um, I am choosing which ones I want to be grouped. So right. like if there's, you know, sometimes there will be like three different 808s. So those can all be printed as one step. Right, right, right. right. So we're grouping those, pressing it, letting and it run, and the, and coming it. back, A, B, yeah. and make sure we're good. Right. Boom, you know what I mean? So just to, and thank you for all of that, by the way. And Ooh. by the way, somebody got a somebody. I hope that whatever company uh, is doing that, they uh, see this because boy, yeah, did you just sell it to me? What you gonna say? I, I I would like to say something, and this is probably one of the most kind things I can say, man. I've I've been on this couch. <laughs> I've seen a lot of Pro Tools users come through. No disrespect to the other Pro Tools users. You seem like the one that needs the least therapy, man. Like, <laughs> I appreciate that. Like, you got it figured out. That's actually a really big compliment coming from you. <laughs> no, I appreciate that. No, he got that. it figured out. I ain't gonna lie to sit Yeah, just that was, the workflow enhancements. Yeah. And then yeah. just to finish it up, there's a couple other little things on here that I like. Um, I have one called the clean deck where um, I'll just show you. So when I when I when when it's time to make a clean, um, I learned this from Leslie. Mm -hmm. What he would do is he would just duplicate the lead vocal tracks uh -huh. and make the cleans, just make them a different color. So they're right there and you just mute them. So when it's time oh, to make a gotcha. clean, just press this, you'll see what will happen. It duplicated them, it changed them to the color I want, it made them bigger and it soloed them. Oh my so now gosh. I'm just ready to make the clean, it's right there. That would have took me, I would have been That's like right clicking, so you know, I would have been right clicking, yeah. duplicate, then I would have had to probably, change. you know, like, wow. Yeah, so, so that, color coded um, the whole thing. And nine. then on the clean deck, we have just some audio suite stuff. So there's like very speed up, very speed down. So it's like one button, gotcha. does it, yeah. opens it, for curses it. and stuff like yep. that. Right. Runs it, closes right. it, all that stuff. Wow. Um, the clean duplicate. And then this one was in SoundFlow. We have our utilities deck. The last thing I'll talk about that I think is incredibly helpful for uh -huh. every user uh -huh. is there's there was a one inside the SoundFlow software because they have like a store in there where you can download stuff that other users oh, have made. Oh, got you. To get, get yeah. the prompts and so stuff So yeah, like you that. can download um, workflows that other users have made or right. you can make your own. That's right? fire. So it's a whole like community. Yeah, it's a whole community. Okay, got exactly. you. Exactly. We have a form. It's very robust. Right. right. Um, utilities deck, I love it. It has this one called copy track data. And I'll show you all what that is. Uh-huh. He's gonna pick a track just for my for my audio people. Yep. So I'm picking a track that has a couple plugins on it, has a send on it. If I press copy track data, uh -huh. you'll see that it's coming up. And essentially, what it's doing is it's making a temporary track preset for that track. Gotcha. So now mm. I can go to this track right below it, and you're gonna paste it. So I have options. I can paste the entire track data. Uh -huh. I can also just paste the inserts, and you'll see what happens. It pastes oh, just the crap. inserts. Right. And if there was inserts there, it would have removed those inserts. And, and put the, the put that one there. On. That's hard. I can also paste the sends. The send. And because this is a temporary track preset, uh -huh. I can copy that track, open up another session, right. and paste the inserts from this session into, into that one. session. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So you know what's crazy? Oh. Because I've only recently started to really get into, I say past couple of years, uh, saving track presets in Pro Tools, mm -hmm. which I was like, oh my gosh, we can save track presets yeah. because him and I have like a very popular, like a very go-to bass sound that we like. Exactly. And then I started to say, because I remember like, 
having that session and instead of going import uh, session, session data, data, I was like, oh, that'd be really dope uh, just to be able to save the track preset and just bring it in. Mm -hmm. So seeing you do it this way is just so interesting just from a temporary standpoint. Yeah, it's a temporary preset. So right. it's like if you're working on an album, uh -huh. we probably all working on the same way. Right. Get one song solid, especially if it's like an album where it's like they recorded it at the same place, same, the same place, person, right. same type of stuff. Right. Get one song solid. Right. Now I can just copy the presets from that one song and paste it into right. the other Right. Else. Especially if I know this is how they like their vocal exactly. sounding and stuff. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, even with the setup deck, those are just presets. Right. Right. That's right. how it knows like, okay, how do I know that this drum is supposed to be purple? I just made a track preset right. called drums and I made the track purple right. at huh. the side. So it's, it's just loading the preset and then and moving just, it to the folder. Right. right. Essentially. That's wow. how. Dude, you know, just what everything, just kind of just to wrap wrap things up and yep. stuff like that. Um, you know, one really appreciate you being here. No problem. Um, yeah. there was one thing I just d did want to touch on, just you as a human being. Yeah. Let's um, do it. I know that you have uh After Five Studios, which yep. is your your main stage uh, as far as your places where you record and stuff, and that's in Philly, correct? Yes. Just making sure. And I know that you are very big on giving back and things of that nature. I know that you come from a family of educators too, which mm -hmm. is I found really interesting. I. I didn't, not saying I didn't expect that because that sounds really silly to say, but it was just a, something something to learn about you. Like, oh, there's layers to you as far as that's concerned. Wh what are some of the things that um, that you're looking to do as far as that side of just like the community and stuff like that? Because oh, yeah. I know that's a big part of you like and stuff. And I want to make sure I just like kind of touch no, on that. No, I appreciate that. Right that. No, yeah. I mean, giving back and helping. I mean, that's why we're having these conversations. For sure. Right? And, you know, yeah. that's why I love having these conversations and not holding anything back. Right. Because yeah. all of these things, this is just like uh -huh. little things I've taken from other people. My whole template right. is just like... Right. This person did that. Cool. Right. Great. Mm -hmm. like, like even mm -hmm. in my template, like you'll see the lead vocal has a dollar sign. I saw that in a Josh Goodwin mix with the masters. I'm like, uh -huh. that's cool. Like <laughs> the drums are this color. I saw that in somebody else's video. That's right. cool. You know, um, because so many people have helped me and I, I want to help others. Um, so we've, the, my favorite thing about my studio is um, it wasn't intentional, but it kind of just happened where our space kind of became a hub in the city for women of color, for people in the LGBTQ community. Mm -hmm. It, it became a space where they felt comfortable making music because like we're on the third floor of a warehouse, there's windows. The staff that I had is incredibly respectful and right. they understood that we were trying to cater to that community mm -hmm. and give them a place where they felt safe. Right. You know, we've had tons of interns over the years. I mean, even now, um, we usually have one to two high school interns in January. We're, nice. o we're always trying to give back. Right. Um, you know, in the future, I would love to, I've toyed around with it before but you know we've wanted to start like a free summer program before yes. you know mm. looking to try to make that happen right. um just because you know i understand how blessed i am right like right. i grew up single mom you know um i got all the opportunities got scholarships to go to the best schools and i, I understand that like you know if you play my story a hundred times mm. 90 something times it goes in the opposite direction. And yes. so I feel like it's on me to help as many people as I can. And right. I enjoy doing it, you yeah. know? Um, it's something I learned from my mother and my grandmother and my right. aunts, like that's how they are, right. you know? And just pushing the community forward and just helping give as many opportunities as possible. And right. to me, that's like, hey, let me show you these little things that'll make your you life easier. You brought your laptop. Right? <laughs> yeah, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah man. And I. I Obviously, I just wanted to bring it up because I just wanted to, I just wanted people to get an uh, even heavier sense of the type of person you are. Because even when I've watched you just interviews and just heard about you and stuff like that, I've gotten that sense. And I just wanted to make sure on our platform, we also let people kind of feel that for themselves and stuff like that. that. So, you know, Ben, I really want to say, dude, I really appreciate you just coming by, talking to us on such short notice, too. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and... Yeah, man, just giving back and stuff like that and just everything you do and that's it. Do you have anything coming up okay. that you want people to know about or anything like that? Yeah, I mean, right now, um, just continuing to work and grow. Right. Um, working with some artists in Philly, which has been awesome. Um, just looking forward to the next year. Right. Mm -hmm. Getting in a little bit into developing some people, that's cool. And oh, just nice. kind of moving into that next phase of my career yeah. and, and right. you know, what it looks like and stuff. Right. And Super dope. Yeah, and just making good music and, and helping people. That's, 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 that's all that's all it's really about. You know? and, and I, I do want to give a shout out again to Cruz. Cruz, Facts. thank you so much for yeah, making this happen, please. dog. It would it just wouldn't happen for you um if it wasn't for you. And um, yeah, man, Ben Thomas, ladies and gentlemen. Sure. Yeah, yeah, thank you guys. Time, I'll, I'll be back ben anytime, Thomas. you know. Please, please, next please time do. slide through, man. Yeah. We need to take some of them vocals. And we're going to do an FL Studio Mix Challenge, bro. Let's and do we are out of here with that one. Uh, <laughs> this has been the My Audio Nerds Podcast, the podcast for audio nerds like yourself. Please make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. Also, remember, one lucky person in the comment is, is going to get that VIP Gold Edition Rosetta Compressor. My name is Devon Toronto, Pro Tools user. I know you wanted to also let us know where you at. Tell Come me. Come on, YouTube channel. You already know the vibes by now. We're giving away FL Studio Producer Edition outside. Subscribe. 
Big facts. Yeah. And what's your what's your app by the way? Like yeah, where they can uh, find you. You can find me Ben F Thomas Music. Got you, Got you on Instagram and stuff like that. This has been the My Audio Nerds Podcast. Y'all appreciate y'all. We out of here.